G'day. Welcome to Emergency Medicine Topics in One Coffee. I'm Alan Giles, an emergency physician. Today's topic is heart blocks. First, second, and of course, third degree. Let's get into it. First degree heart block. Now remember the PR interval. That's the distance between the beginning of the P wave and the beginning of the QRS complex. Normally, as in this example, it's less than five small squares or 0.2 of a second. But in first degree heart block, it's longer than five small squares, as we can see here in this example. It may be normal, but can also be seen in a number of different conditions. It can occur with drugs that block the AV node, drugs like beta blockers, calcium antagonists, amiodarone or digoxin. Myocarditis can also cause it, as can inferior myocardial ischemia and hyperkalemia. In itself, it's not a clinically a concern, but should direct your mind towards an underlying cause. Next, second degree heart block. Now there's two types, Mobitz type one and Mobitz type two. Now I bet you're wondering who Mobitz was. Well, here's Waldemar Mobitz, who was a Russian German physician who died in 1951. Now, Mobitz type 1 and Mobitz type 2, in both types, some of the P waves don't initiate a QRS complex. In Mobitz type 1, also known as Wenkebach, and by the way, here's a picture of Karel Wenkebach, a Dutch anatomist who died in 1940. So in Wenkebach, the PR interval gradually prolongs until the point where the P wave doesn't initiate a QRS complex. Look here. Stretch, stretch, non-conducted P. Again, stretch, stretch, non-conducted P. Now you might get stretch, 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 non-conducted P, as we can see here. Or how about stretch, 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 non-conducted P. All are Mobitz type 1, also known as Winky Park. If you think about it, this will give the appearance on a rhythm strip of grouping of the QRS complexes. Groups of two, three, or four. Looking at the rhythm strip, it's a pretty good trick to pick up quickly that it may be Winkebach. Mobitz type one is usually a reversible condition. It is often seen soon after an inferior infarct. The inferior part of the heart is supplied by the right coronary artery, which also supplies the AV node. So it's not surprising that in an inferior infarct, your AV node may also be playing up. The causes are essentially the same as the ones I mentioned for a first degree heart block. Most patients are asymptomatic and don't require treatment. But occasionally a patient may present bradycardic with lightheadedness and require some IV atropine. Very rarely, a patient with Mobitz type 1, that is again, winky bark, requires a pacemaker. In Mobitz type 2, the other form of second degree heart block, there is intermittent non-conduction of the P wave. But you don't get that prolongation of the PR interval we saw in Mobitz type 1, winky bark. Here the PR interval is the same each time, but some of the P waves don't get conducted, some do. And normally there's a regularity to how often the P wave gets through. It may be that every second P wave gets through, a two to one block, as we can see demonstrated here. And here's another example here. Now here is an example where only every third P wave gets through, a three to one block. So this would be Mobitz type two, three to one block. So what causes it and is it dangerous? It's usually caused by structural damage such as infarction, fibrosis, inflammation to the conducting system just below the AV node. Now remember in Mobitz type one, winky bark, we said it was usually reversible. Not so in Mobitz type two. Mobitz type two is far more important clinically in the emergency department than Mobitz type one. You can imagine with four to one, five to one, or even six to one blocks, there's a long time 
without ventricular contraction. And that severe bradycardia can cause hypotension and collapse. So patients with Mobitz type 2 require admission for monitoring and investigation. Occasionally they'll need temporary transcutaneous pacing in the emergency department and a consequent permanent pacemaker. You can try atropine intravenously, but often it just doesn't work. Now on to third degree heart block. Here the essential thing is that the atria, represented on an ECG by the P wave, and the ventricles, represented on the ECG as the QRS complex, are contracting separately. They are dissociated. There is no conduction through the AV node. The big problem now is that the ventricles are now relying on their intrinsic escape rhythm, which can occur anywhere from the AV node all the way down through the bundle branch, the Kinji system, or even the ventricular muscle, and can be really slow, as in less than 30 beats per minute. So in third degree heart block, if the ventricular escape is above the bundle of his, there's often a ventricular rate around 45 to 60 per minute, and the escape QRS is nice and narrow, the patient is usually not hemodynamically compromised. However, if that escape is at or below the bundle of his, the QRS is widened and the heart rate slower, you know, often less than 45 per minute. Understandably, these patients are often hemodynamically compromised. Unfortunately, they usually don't respond to intravenous atropine and often require transcutaneous pacing with a smidge of ketamine intravenously to tolerate it and to temporise things on the way to getting a permanent pacemaker. So what causes third degree heart block is quite similar to secondary heart block in terms of underlying causes. As I've already mentioned, the acute care of the patient is based around assessing what the hemodynamic consequence is of the slow heart rate. If they're compromised, they'll generally require transcutaneous pacing to take control of the heart rate whilst permanent pacing is being urgently coordinated. You can try IV atropine at a dose of sort of 25 mics per kilo, but it really works. And the synthetic sympathomimetic drug isoprenaline is still used in some settings at a dose of sort of 1 to 10 mics per minute. However, most emergency departments will go directly to transcutaneous pacing. To finish off and summarise, here's a heart block poem from Princeton Nursing, which may, well, may not assist you. If the R is far from P, then you have a first degree. Longer, longer, longer drop, then you have a wanky bark. If some P's don't get through, then you have a Mobitz 2. If P's and Q's don't agree, then you have a third degree. There you go. Okay, I reckon that just about do for heart blocks in one cup of coffee. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time. Cheers.